Here's a guy that believes you can bring a bow to a battle. Here's a look at the brand new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Titans Arsenal. Adopted by Navajo shaman named Brave Bow, orphan Roy Harper spent his early teens learning survival skills and becoming a crack archer. He learned so quickly he eventually earned the nickname Speedy. Making his way to Seattle, Roy served as a costume sidekick and mechanical engineer to millionaire Oliver Queen, the Green Arrow. In addition to battling alongside the Emerald Archer, Roy was a founding member of the Teen Titans. Just before we find out what Speedy's got equipped in his quiver, let's go ahead and grab the tape measure just to see how tall the figure stands. Once again, I'd like to thank the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide this sample of Arsenal that we could have a look at in this review. Arsenal, in this case, stands about six and three quarters of an inch tall, or the figure is going to be about 17 centimeters in height. Arsenal is the second of the Titan figures we're going to be looking at, and we're going to just move him over to free up space for the first Titan that we looked at, the leader of the Titans. Here's what he looks like along with Nightwing. Nightwing, to be fair, is going to be a taller figure, but I think a lot of it has something to do with the fact that he sculpted the hair on Nightwing just to give him a little bit higher reach. If not for that, it does look like they are sharing very similar styles of bodies, very lean and trimmed. From toned bodies to tallying accessories, Arsenal comes in clue with a total of seven things. Now, granted, only three of those things really do belong for the figure. Two of the legs, for example, obviously are going to go with Beast Boy, and then he comes in clue with the display stand and trading card that some would even argue aren't really accessories for the figure, but I would say if they're going to be packaged along with the figure, I'm going to count them as part of the accessories. That being said, the figure comes in clue with the trading card, yes. The trading card, in fact, when you're looking at it, isn't that far different from the actual suit that they decide to give him. Although one thing that's very different is the head sculpt. The head sculpt for the actual physical figure does have, in fact, the cap turned around. And instead of actually wearing the, the mask here on the front of his face, they decide to give him his goggles instead. I prefer myself, only speaking from the person behind the camera, his own opinion. I like this look of Arsenal more so with the mask. I hope at some point we do get ourselves a gold label variant of this Arsenal with this more familiar, I feel at least, more familiar look to Arsenal. Either way, though, he's drawn back several arrows, about to fire those off, and then flip them around to the back. The back of the card at least does show that the real name is Roy Harper, and a very simple to read. Granted, you could pause this and read for yourself. It happens to also be, as always the case, the same thing I read at the beginning of this review as well. So nice looking card. Hope we do get this version of Arsenal at some point. Uh, like I said, the figure does also come include with a display stand. Same stand as we always seem to get. Black circular stand with the DC logo. Psss sizzled down below and then you got one neighboring peg up the top top corner that's going to plug into the underside of either one of arsenal's feet we're going to come back to that speaking of feet how's this for a segue the figure comes in clue with these giant legs i mean look at the size of these tree trunks compared along with arsenal they almost go up to his shoulders these are the large and i would much rather uh, probably ra rather say rather smelly feet of Beast Boy. Look at the sizing of these things. Bring in the body of uh, where we started off. Obviously, we only have looked at Nightwing in the earlier review, so we only have two things to work with. We have ourselves a torso, and now we got ourselves some legs. We're going to take the legs, making sure, of course, we've got them plugged in the right way. Uh, simply what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the socket that's here on the top of the thigh, and I'm going to find its way onto the peg here and just Again, wiggle this in. Usually it's never successful the first time that I do this in the review, and I always have to have I always have to go back later and put a little bit of heat on these just to ensure that the legs aren't gonna fall off. But we're gonna plug them in for as best as I can do right now, just to show you how much taller Beast Boy is gonna be when he's all said and done. I'm gonna move that to the side for right now. The figure comes included also with a quiver. The quiver itself is made of not the softest of plastics, a nice good rigid bit of plastic. It doesn't look like it has any bit of paint on it, though. It does have decent sculpting, though, and it does match the burgundy brown that he has for the rest of his body. Simply just take the figure, flip him around, and then locate on the back of his figure's body. You, of course, have a peg hole. Just then take the quiver and plug that in place. You can either have it this way, you can have it this way, you can have it this way, or you can have it this way. If you have it this way, it's not going to help with the next accessories the figure comes included with as he comes with a series of arrows. Just getting the figure to stand for right now. Is he going to stand? He might just fall, so we're just going to put him down for right now. The figure also comes included with a series of arrows. And like with the green arrow, ah, I should have brought in green arrow for the comparison. Like with the green arrow we looked at earlier, all the arrows are all attached. They all sort of look like trees in a big giant forest. 
You can see the top feathers at least are painted from the otherwise dark brown that they've given for the rest of the arrow. So they do break up nicely and it doesn't look like it's all just the same sculpted piece. I'm going to go ahead and take that and slide it just to the top of the quiver. And there is a lot of room to grow here. I mean, you can uh, you can see how much space is still left behind here. Probably could have taken a couple of loose arrows and even fit that in there. So at least if you wanted to have, say, Arsenal display with a couple of arrows in his hand, oh, that would have been nice. Uh, they would have had at least a place to store on the top of his quiver. Like, it does seem like there's a lot of space to rent out here for new tenants. Uh, again, like this is, uh, again, there's a lot, you know, a lot of space, but I guess if that's, that's okay. There's nothing, it, it'd be worse if they didn't put any space in there or even, even worse if they had molded the arrows as part of the quiver and you wouldn't even have the means to take them out. So if you wanted to really display Arsenal, for example, without the arrows, simply just take them off. That's all you have to do. The figure also comes included as well with his bow. Now the bow, I will say from a color standpoint, is pretty close to the color that he has for the rest, for the front of his body. I mean, just to look at it, it is a little bit brighter, but it's pretty close enough that you can then look at it and display it. And it doesn't look like it belongs to another figure. When it comes to displaying it though, I find like the hands are really hard plastic. So you really have to kind of pry the hands to get them in there. A lot of times it usually ends up squishing the thumb, like it just so happened to have happened right now. Uh, it does fit well in his hand. And then again, like the other hand, literally on the other hand, is good for drawing back the bowstring. Or if you had another arrow, the arrow could also have fit into this hand. Or again, you could just take in the bow and put the bow on this side. You can do again whatever you want. Then to complete the look, go ahead and put the arrows back into the back of the quiver. Turn this to the side. It does look good. I like the look of it. Uh, arguing, of course, the point that, yeah, the figure probably could have come included with a couple of standalone arrows just so you could have something displayed in the figure's hands and not just rely on all just the chunk of arrows that's going to fit on the back of his quiver. But other than that, he at least comes included with accessories. An archer not to come included with a quiver, arrows, or even a bow would seem really rather out of place. Let's go ahead for right now and take these off because I know it's just going to be a little bit easier to look at the figure with all the accessories off of the figure that put everything to the side. Getting a closer look at Arsenal... Sort of maybe the thing I already had mentioned earlier, uh, like in this case, they've decided to give him these really large shades, like these goggles that he has on the front of his face. I prefer myself, Arsenal have the mask, but that's just my own personal preference. Uh, they have once again given them the cap. The cap is non-removable, obviously. It's just being molded for the rest of his face. It is missing, though, the little symbol that he normally has on the front of his cap. Uh, again, when you're going to have it turned around, you're not going to notice it as much. But I wish they could have actually put the little symbol there on the back of, the, of there as well. Uh, I think it was it was Oliver Queen's symbol. I'm just trying to look at the card again. Let's just bring that back in so you can see. Yeah, I, I wish they could have actually put that on the front of his cap. Either way, though, uh, one thing I certainly would like to see this guy get released down the road in a gold label edition with the mask, yes. With the cap turned around, sure. Uh, they probably could have not... I don't think they'd have to necessarily change the suit all that much. The suit itself kind of consists of, again, like this burgundy brown, making up sort of the undersuit that he wears. And then he sort of then wears this brighter color over top of it. The color I could best describe is sort of like a cherry taffy. Very bright orange-red. The orangey red actually carries all the way down the sides, uh, inside his thighs, and also on the little kneecapped areas that he has there on the front of his suit. If not for that, it's pretty much all this dark brown that we're getting for the majority of the figure. Sculpting is really good on this, even the places that aren't necessarily painted, like the back of the figure's body, where, of course, the quiver is going to go over top of it anyways. You'd never even notice it was there in the first place. But, uh, I mean, there is an area here, obviously, where the straps have just been left off painted. They, they start nice here, and then they just abruptly stop right around here. But again, if you're going to be taking yourself the quiver, let's just do that for the sake of argument. If you're going to put the quiver right there anyways, you would never be none the wiser that that, that something wasn't actually left off the painting line. Uh, one thing I do like for touches of detail is the fact that they actually took the time to put the tattoos there on Speedy's arms. He's got the little skull there. Kind of looks like a Cthulhu with the wings there on the sides. And then he also has the tattoos on this side of poison and a little skull down below as well. These actually are printed a lot nicer than I thought they might be, especially with poison. Something like this, I would imagine they probably would have printed it on and not likely hand painted it. You'd never be able to hand paint that. But that does look, that came across, really came, came out nice and clean. He's got some nice dark colors of the brown there also here for his arms that carry over then to straps that connect then to his gloves. The joint is one thing you'll notice with the wrist here that isn't quite the same color as this glove and isn't quite the, as the same color as the strap that he has on his form. It's pretty close, and at least it's coloring in brown. It's colored in brown, not necessarily the color of skin tone, because that would then break up the continuation of the, of the supposed brown that's supposed to be making up the majority of his hands. He is wearing fingerless gloves. Everybody was wearing fingerless gloves. 
And again, he's got some really nice sculpting to him. This isn't a figure necessarily that has a whole lot of paint going for him. I think probably what they've ended up doing here was they probably molded in this color, I'm guessing, of the plastic and then painted the brown parts because it does look like, I think if it was the other way around, if they painted this over top of the brown, you probably would see some a little bit of bleed or maybe some areas where the brush strokes weren't completely finished. I'm guessing that they probably molded it in this color and then they painted the brown over top of it because the brown definitely does have more shinier finish to it. But overall, again, like a really, really neat looking figure. I hope, I really hope this guy gets himself a gold label edition. I mean, obviously the argument has always been made that why can't they just include swapped out heads? Build a figures, I think are a little harder to do that simply because so much plastic is already being dedicated to the build a figure piece that's going to go along with it. But yeah, I'd love to see this guy get himself a gold label edition at some point. For the figure's articulation, uh, Arsenal's head does, once again, it's on a ball joint, so it does rotate all the way around. It does look up about that high, and it does look down, well, a lot, a lot better. The head does rock back and forth as well. Uh, the only other thing I would also say about the figure, and you probably already noticed this for yourself as well, is that the coloring of his face isn't quite the same coloring as his neck. His neck definitely seems to be a lighter coloring of flesh. But still, other than that, it's, it's close enough and far enough away also, you're not going to notice it as well. Uh, for the arms, i already looking at the head. For the arms, though, the arms rotate all the way around. Uh, when you are rotating them, just, just by the nature of the way they've cut the shoulders, the arms, when you angle them or rotate them, they're always going to be rotating outward, not upward. Uh, it's a soft plastic, somewhat soft plastic here, but not enough to really allow those arms to rotate straight. So when you are turning them, they're always going to be turning on an angle like this. The figure does have a bicep swivel. The figure does possess a double hinge on the elbows, and the hands, once again, do rotate all the way around. Upper torso is on a ball joint. The lower torso, just behind the belt here, is also on a ball joint. The legs, once again, seem to be on ratcheted joints, so you can split those out. You can take the legs and again, move them forward, move them back. A mild swivel at the top of the thigh, possessing a double hinge on the knee. And again, you got that ankle articulation here this way, this way, and he also does have the foot articulation also as well. Uh, again, nice looking figure. Uh, I'm glad, first of all, that they included accessories with this guy. Nightwing, obviously, when we talked about in his review, the fact that he didn't come included with his Eskimo sticks were a bit of a bummer. Once again, speaking of which, there's Nightwing right there. Yeah, I do wish that Nightwing could have come included with his es Eskimo sticks, but I think it's more rightfully fitting for an archer. If he didn't include, if he didn't include a bow, an arrow, and a quiver, it would seem a little out of place. Uh, so I'm glad to see that they actually included it. But similar to Green Arrow, of course, the one that he works alongside before he eventually grows up and becomes his own man. Like Gr uh, Green Arrow that we looked at before, his arrows and his quiver are sort of a package deal. They didn't include extra arrows, which is the kind of one thing I really wish that these figures would start to come include with. Because after all, when you think of an archery, you always think of the bow being drawn back and an arrow in his other hand. At least for Arsenal's bowstring, it's made of softer plastic. So if you wanted to pose the figure the way it looks like he's drawing back the bow, you can do it. But unfortunately, without having a dedicated separate arrow, it just looks like he's pulling back air. I will see if maybe I can find myself a tiny little arrow maybe I've got from another figure before and have it displayed in his hand, similar to what I was trying to do with Green Arrow. I really think when it comes to archers, it should go hand in hand. If he's going to have the bow in one hand, then he should really have a separate arrow in the other. Still, it's a nice looking figure for what it is. And I didn't want to beat the horse too much by saying, or I already talked about this how many times already. But looking at, again, again the trading card that comes in clue with Arsenal, I do really wish that we do get ourselves at some point the masked version of Arsenal with the cap turned forward. I like what we got with this one, and the colors are nice and bright. And I like that they very cleanly printed on the tattoos on both sides of his arms. But I hope at some point, once again, we do get ourselves a gold label edition of this guy. The chances of these figures ever getting swapped out heads probably isn't going to be happening, especially when you consider a build-a-figure piece like the two long legs of Beast Boy coming clue with Arsenal. That's already a lot of plastic being dedicated to this figure that to then include a separate head sculpt, this guy's probably going to get himself. I'm convinced this guy's going to get a gold label release down the road. But what do you guys think of Arsenal? Let me know down below in the comments section. And do you really feel that when it comes to figures of archers, they should always come include with a separate arrow to be put in the other hand? Let me know down below in the comments section. Once again, a big thank you to the folks over at McFarland Toys. They did provide the sample of the brand new Titans Arsenal that we could have a look in this review. We are now down two figures with two more still to go. We are also going to be building ourselves Beast Boy, the Bath Beast Boy, this whole time. So, of course, we will also be looking at him in his own separate review. If you did, guys, if you guys did enjoy this review, why not hit with a like? If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and on board to see the rest of the Titans reviews, then make sure, if you haven't already done so, that you hit that subscribe button down below. And, of course, that you're turning on the bell notification. Lots of things coming your way, guys. So, as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.